Good morning, my beautiful diamonds and my Teletubbies and my TikTokers. Yes, I had to ask, add my TikTokers also. Today we're going to talk about, today is July 1st. Yay! The 4th of July is right around the corner, which I have that day off and the following day. I'm so excited about that. All right, today we're going to talk about choose to believe how much God really, really loves you. Remember that worry and anxiety are rooted in the fear that we won't be taken care of or that something bad will happen to us. The assurance that you will be taken care of is proven in the Bible at 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, where it says, Such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Perfect love is the kind of love that God has for his children, and that includes you. This scripture teaches us that if we are still afraid of not being taken care of, we need to grow in knowledge that God loves us unconditionally, perfectly, and everlastingly. This knowledge usually takes time to develop because we have difficulty believing that God could or would love us due to our imperfections. Actually, it is because of our imperfections that God sent his son Jesus to die for us and take the punishment we deserved because of our sin. I had to uh, spend several years studying God's word for me in order to get my mind completely renewed in this area. Because of the sexual abuse Joyce Myers is sharing with us, I experienced from my father and being abandoned, being raped by my father and being abandoned by my mother, I was convinced that if I didn't take care of myself, nobody else would take care of me. My parents certainly would not take care of me, nor would any of the other people I asked for help. However, God is not like people, and we cannot judge how he will treat us according to how others have treated us. Let me encourage you to pray and ask God to help you grow in the revelation of how much he loves you. He loves all of us perfectly, and therefore we don't have to worry or be anxious when we have problems. We can always depend on Jehovah God working through his son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. So that's wonderful. And I know, I can't speak for you, but I know that I am very, very appreciative that Jesus Christ, well, first of all, Jehovah God and Jesus Christ loves us so much. And now it's time for your power thought. Here we go. Often we base our value. Hold on a moment. Too often we base our value on how someone is treating us, how successful we are, how perfect of a life we've lived. The problem is all of those things can change. If you're getting your value out of how people treat you, then if they hurt you, they disappoint you, you're going to feel devalued. If you're basing your value off of your achievements, how much you make, what you drive, the title behind your name, then if something happens and you don't have that position, your business goes down, then your value will go down. And some people don't feel good about themselves because they've made mistakes in life. They're not where they thought they would be. Now they're living insecure, feeling inferior. They're basing their value on their performance. The creator of the universe breathed his life into you. How someone treats you doesn't change your value. What they say or do doesn't lessen who you are. Mistakes you've made doesn't decrease your value. That's what you did, that's not who you are. You can buy a bigger house, drive a better car, but that doesn't make you any more valuable. That increases your net worth, not your self-worth. 
You were already valuable when you had the small apartment and no title behind your name. That position may give you more influence, but not more value. You can be a stay-at-home mom raising your children. You may not have the influence of the CEO, but you have the same value. Value is not based on what you do, what you make, who you know. That's superficial. Those things can change. Your value comes from your creator. God breathed his life into you. You have the DNA of Almighty God. You have royalty in your blood. But the enemy works overtime trying to devalue us. He'd love for you to go through life letting what people say make you feel inferior, comparing your life to somebody else's, thinking you'll feel good about yourself when you catch up to them, when you live in that neighborhood, or when you perform perfectly, when you break the addiction, then you'll feel valuable. But nothing you do will make you any more valuable. Nothing you achieve, nothing you overcome, you are valuable right now. God calls you a masterpiece. You are one of a kind. You didn't come off an assembly line. You weren't mass produced. God made you unique. There will never be another you. Put your shoulders back. Start carrying yourself with confidence. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, good old Joel Osteen. We do live in a world where we're constantly bombarded with messages telling us that we need to have the latest gadgets, the nicest clothes, and the perfect body in order to feel happy and to be successful. But the truth is, my darlings, none of those things really matter in the grand scheme of things. Our true value comes from the fact that we were created by a loving God who made us in his image. We are valuable simply because we exist, not because of what we have or what we look like. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with enjoying nice things or taking care of our appearance. But we need to remember that those things don't define us. They're just temporary and superficial. The real value in life comes from things like love, kindness, compassion. It comes from using our talents and abilities to make a positive difference in this world. And it comes from knowing that we are loved and accepted just as we all, flaws and all. So if you're feeling down about yourself because you don't have the latest iPhone or the perfect body, remember that those things should never define you. Your true value comes from your relationship with your creator and the love that he has for you. So you go out there and be confident in who you are. You are valuable just as you are and nothing can ever change that. And remember that my beautiful diamonds, Teletubbies, and my TikTokers. And now it's time for your Bible trivia questions. How well do you really know your Bible? God made a beautiful garden to be Adam and Eve's home. There was no sickness or death at that time. He told them they could eat from any tree they liked, except for one. What was the name of the tree they were not allowed to touch? Was it A, the tree of good fortune, B, the tree of Amazon, C, the tree of good and evil, or D, the Tarzan tree? You can find that answer at Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Next question. Adam and Eve were enjoying the garden. But there was one very clear animal, clever animal. The serpent wanted to tempt them to disobey God. Who was he secretly? Was he A, God's best friend? B, the angel of war? C, God's henchman? Or was it D, the devil? Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 will show you the answer. Your last question the serpent caught Eve alone one day looking at the tree. He told her to try a bite. It wouldn't harm anything. 
What did he tell Eve was the reason God didn't want her or Adam to eat the fruit? Was it A, God didn't want them to become greater than he was? B, God wanted to see if they would make a good choice and reward them? C, God didn't want them to have children? Or was it D, God didn't want the garden angel to be upset? You can find that answer at Genesis chapter 3. So there you have it, my beautiful diamonds. Monday, 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 Monday. And it's July 1st. Yes. Ah, actually, I'm posting this on Sunday night. I'm, I'm doing it in the evening. I'm just going to upload it tomorrow because I don't do any more uploads on Saturday and Sunday. I do my uploads on Monday, Monday through Friday. And you know, Monday through Friday, I do my daily devotionals and my power thoughts. But anyway, my beautiful diamonds, remember how much Jehovah God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. And I love you very, very much as well. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.